Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro and this is the Temple of Surf, the podcast will give you full access to the best surfers, skaters, shapers, surfboard collectors, shop owners in the world. Discover with me their stories, the greatest successes, amazing behind the scenes and much more. Hello, welcome to the 8th episode of the 3rd of series of the podcast. Today with us from Segol France, 4-time European champion and now surf coach Didier Peter. We discuss with him about his career, surf, coaching and much more. Hi Didier, welcome to the show. Where are you today? I'm uh, in Osegor. It's pretty good. It's the end of the season here. It's really uh, back to a better rhythm because the rhythm of summer was crazy without waves, intense. And now it's like the the reward of the hot season, good sessions, a uh, lot of time. What you call la dolce vita is right <laughs> now for us in France. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the Italian, the Dolce Vita is really not doing anything, you know, and I guess you are busy, you have good waves, and you work a lot. <laughs> I was actually I was actually coaching a cool guy from Sicily. His name is Danilo Lamantia. Okay. He has a surf school in uh, uh, the Isola Beach there, and uh, so I was coaching him. He's a coach, but he's also a student, so that's all we are. Like, we all should... Should all learn all our lives, you know what I mean? So we, I like his approach. We never stop, right? Never stop. Exactly. We always grow. There's and- always a better wave and a, another wave and a better way to surf it. So it's forever. <laughs> it's, not, it's forever. It's forever. And we all deal with something that uh, is the ocean that is unpredictable, you know? So uh, the, yeah. not like the surf pool that where one wave is equal to the other. It's just uh, yes. we have to deal with unpredictable things. So that's what's magic about it too. Huh? That's uh, maybe the the swimming pools uh, will come to that level of creating surprise, creating uh, uncertainty. I think that's the future of pools. You know, to be able to surprise a bit and uh, put the yeah. surfers uh, on that uh, spontaneous mode and uh, get the spontaneity of them. That would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. One day. Technology, technology will uh, will do. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So today we're going to talk about many things, but um, the first question I ask everybody is: In your opinion, what is the most important thing in surfing? The wave. Is that right? You cannot surf <laughs> without it, right? <laughs> I think the wave. It is that's where it all starts, and that's where it's gonna. It can all end. You know, it's uh, the relationship with the wave. It's like a. It's like if you told me what's the most important in love, you know, is the the exchange with your partner. And I think uh, with the web, you have a lot of job. Of you understand, course. feel, and uh, it's the main it's the main uh, actor of surfing. And uh, the people that think they are the actors, they are the main guy, like surfers that have a lot of. Uh, I don't know, ego or something like that. Uh, you could have ego or whatever, no problem. But uh, you have to put the wave uh, in the priority of things if you want to be a good surfer. Definitely. So what is your relationship with the wave? How would you define it? If you had to define it? Uh, for me, it's a, it's a partnership for life, I think, with the ocean. It's a, it's a, it's a true friend that I try to understand and that I try to respect, you know, the maximum uh, as I can and to learn from it. So I, I really love uh, all the ways. I try to love, uh, give unconditional love, you know. I don't try to to say, ah, oh, I prefer this wave or these waves. I really want to be adaptive, get the most of uh, each situation. And that's all... With the age, I try to evolve. You know, uh, I go surf and there's less people, but I always try to find whatever I can take. And there's always the presence that I can get from any condition. And I'm into that state of mind now. Uh, so I would say uh, that's all. I, that's the relationship. And it's like I try to get very, very intimate with the ocean, you know, try to understand Every you can't foresee the un, unexpected because it's there's a, a lot of unexpected things and unprevisibility, but you can reduce for sure the the uncertainty. You can reduce the imprevisibility, and you can uh, 
anticipate on some things with the tides, the change. And as you be become a better surfer, you, you learn how to anticipate on those little details. And that's how you get more reward, more, more love from, the, from her. She can give you love too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he loves you back. But he's also, uh, you know, the relationship with the wave is something that evolves together with the time. You know, maybe when you're young, you want to catch yeah. every single wave and you have the power. Yeah. And then yeah, when yeah, that's natural. Yeah. Believe me, I want to catch a lot of waves too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, when you're a surf coach and you, you don't surf every day and you watch the ocean every day, you, you get some energy, you want to surf, right? So when I go surf, I get that, uh, that fire. I want to get waves. <laughs> of course, of course. So that's all you have to become smart to get more waves and not miss any opportunity. There's so many opportunity missed when I'm on the beach and I watch that I try to not miss all those opportunities. Yeah, it's a, it's a good plan. It's a good plan. You know, I was interviewing uh, Nat Young uh, a few weeks ago and uh, he told me, now he's 72, 73, something like that. And he told me, Alessandro, you know, I'm surfing five waves per day. And maybe I'm, because of my age now, I'm catching three. But those three, are the best. And so, you know, you go to, through the age and you become old and then even uh, for like a world champion or a legend like him, you know, him, the important thing is to have those three waves in alone, yeah. nobody disturbs him and to uh, to enjoy you know, and, and to have that kind That's of... That's good. I want to be, I want to serve for my life. And, you know, I want, I like the fact that this guy... Uh, He's lived a very big surfing life and he's still going uh, to get that little uh, exchange. Yeah. That keep that relationship. I think that's uh, that's the, the key, you know? So yeah, definitely. I'll definitely. do the same. I'll try. We all, we all try. We all try. <laughs> so what was your first proper surfboard and do you still have it? Unfortunately, I, I didn't think about it at this time, but I let it go and I should have kept that board. It was about a uh, twin fin, Roger Cooper. Roger Cooper was a good shaper from the 70s, probably. And uh, the twin fin, I remember exactly the board, how it was. It was trashed. And it was for my brother. There was no surfboards in Senegal. There was no, no surf shop. And I, I watched that board for six months before I could even surf it. Because mm -hmm. my brother didn't have a board at this board and I could not surf it. And then when he, the new Christmas arrived, <laughs> he had a board and I got this one and it was trashed. There was holes, there was water levels in it. Every time I go surf, there was water in the board and I was making holes to empty and fix it again. That was, but such a good board. Yeah. Good twin fin. I, I have a twin fin nowadays and I try to get that feeling that I had back then, you know, and the twin fin gives you a lot of uh, Good feelings. There's no third fin, so it goes fast and it's uh, it's wide, so it's forgiving. I really love twin fins. But I hope you still you're not digging holes in the surfboard anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But uh, this ball was like uh, at the end of his life was like uh, 10 kilo or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yellow, so you know, so old, but uh, precious, precious. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we're talking about um, surfing. So what was the most important moment of your career as a surfer? Well, uh, there are so many moments and I like all of them, you know. So it's really hard to say, well, this one was better. As a surfer, I, I could say all the moments were good. But uh, there was a special moment where I felt in the state of grace was in Chopo uh, in, during a competition. I was really thinking uh, that's when I pushed myself the most uh, into heavy waves. You know, it was 10 to 12 feet Chopo during man-on-man. Uh, -on -man. And uh, it was the moment I wanted to be, you know, I, I was surfing pipeline and trying to get waves. It's really hard to get waves in pipeline. And then Chopo arrived and uh, there was more room to get the right waves, the bombs the heavy barrels, and I really felt uh, I wanted to, to, to go in that direction. And finally, I get my opportunity because I, I, I did the trials in Chopo and I got that wild card. And the day, the perfect day that I always waited came uh, on the first round of the Tahiti Pro 
And uh, so I said to myself, this is the day I'm going to, I didn't think about the competition. I just wanted my wave, you know, my, my perfect 10, the end of my, my road, my personal uh, road as a barrel charger. And <laughs> I think I got a really heavy drop there. Uh, I almost got that, that 10 point. Okay. I didn't get it. And I got another wave, 9.7. And, uh, you know, that was, I really felt in a state of, uh, like a hunter, you know, like a, a yeah. instinctive animal. I was in that heat. I was watching waves. I was not scared. I was, this is the one. And I, I didn't pull back on any wave. I went, I went big and I was really happy. I lost the heat because I went too big, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was really a big moment. Yeah, at the end, the state, of, the state of grace, what you could call it, uh, the state of grace, you know. Yeah, you, you know, like uh, it depends if you are like a uh, heavy competitor, you really want to win. But if you are a surfer, you really want to to surf and enjoy. So at the end of the day, you know, like as long you can have one of the two, I think is uh, yeah. okay, right? Maybe Kelly Slater will not agree with that, saying like, "No, you should have won, win," you know. And but uh, what to do? <laughs> or having a perfect. But I think uh, I think you're a surfer and you want pleasure, right? You want maximum fun, maximum feelings. So you could find in free surf, but it's not enough for guys like Kelly. They want the free surf. They want the competition. They yeah. want every stimulator possible for them to feed that uh, that beast inside and that wants pleasure, that wants more fun. So he's a, he's a fun addict, right, as well. Uh, and he finds the ways, and competition is uh, one of the ways for him, but I'm sure he's a really, he enjoys every ride. He's going to end up like Nat Young, probably surfing uh, five or six waves at uh, 80 years old. <laughs> oh, he's Nat Young anyways. I think it's like 70, yeah, I remember in the 70, maybe between 72 to 76, I would say, no more than mm. that. Yeah. yeah, I I think, yeah, he told me, yeah, yeah, I think like that. So we're talking about Tupu uh, and Tahiti. So 2024, the Olympic Games come to France <laughs> and comes to Tahiti. So you, you are, uh, you are French, you born, you, you live in France. So how do you live this? I, I'm sure you're training a lot of guys for, and, and girls yeah. for, for this event. Actually, a lot of people are looking into going to Tahiti because it's a specific wave, you know, and there's not many waves you can reproduce, uh, the perfection and the power of Chopo. You have pipeline, you have a couple of uh, similar uh, waves, but not the same. So a lot of people are going to try and get uh, to Tahiti to ad adapt, learn about the wave, and uh, really get confidence because it's about confidence. But you see guys like uh, Medina, for example, the first time he went there, he won the event. It's like... Uh, you have to believe in your skills and uh, be in that state of mind that do, to really want it. So I'm sure there's good, people are going to have a lot of problems. Some of the competitors are going to have problems if it's big tidy, because uh, you can't really cheat in those waves. You you have to go with your heart or <laughs> you're not going to go well. <laughs> you know? so we'll see what happens, you know, but definitely a lot of people uh, that have the Olympic in the mind should go there and train and try to learn about the wave, learn about uh, the, their equipment, or oh, what happens when they meet that moment, that critical moment at the takeoff, because this is the critical moment. Be able to paddle into it and knife into the wave, but then there's not really maneuvers involved. It's a takeoff and a line, right? So it's what happened uh, to make it happen, <laughs> and you need to be there to understand how it's going to happen, right? So. So you're suggesting I'm going to be training a lot of guys to go there, you know, and I think uh, I'm thinking about one guy that I train, uh, Leon Glatzer, that he's been in the Olympics uh, this year. He qualified, uh, you know, he was like an underdog, but he, he really believed and he came and he, he made it. And I think uh, I've seen him surf uh, and paddle and the paddling is something really, really important for Chopo. The way you be able to paddle and be faster than that big mass, you know, and be faster than it to get into it. And I think Leon, guys like that, uh, he has a really strong uh, paddling. So that'd be good that he goes there and test, uh, test that paddling skill in his advantage to see uh, 
how far you can go, how deep you can go and get confident, yeah. And what would be your advice if you had to give like one to the, all these surfers that are going to face Tahiti? Which one? As you surf Tahiti, you, you surf Chopu. So what's the, what would you tell them as a coach? Go with your heart. <laughs> Don't think too much, you know, go because it's, they're all going to be good surfers. And uh, it's about, uh, you know, that relationship once again, you know, love the wave, love the wave, try to love and respect the wave and, uh, and go step by step to see how that relationship goes. But uh, you, you cannot cheat. You cannot go there and say, uh, it's not going to happen. You know, I think it's really about how you see the wave or you want to, to understand it and believe in your skills to, to surf it. But I think uh, when you go back to it, as I told you, it's a paddling. It's just a good paddle and an entry with a, a technique for, uh, for the, that moment where you enter the wave. So a lot of people have that confidence and they, they don't think too much in the moment. So they gain time. And people that have something inside of them, an instinct of uh, preservation, or like uh, if they're not 100%, they will get stuck. They won't have that inside. Uh, they won't get inside. They will be late and they will go to the lip. So it's really about uh, something intuitive, something uh, inside you. And uh, you have to click it. So hard to explain, really hard to explain, but uh, loving the wave. Trusting your uh, your skills and going step by step, you know, and into the main things that matter there. Wow, well, quite uh, quite intense uh, for. But we will see that it will be also a lot of fun, right? To see yeah, yeah. the Olympic Games in uh, in uh, one of the let's say churches of of the yeah. of the surf worldwide. In your career, you met. And you train, you coach so many surfers. Was there a meeting with one surfer that was particularly me meaningful for you? Yes. I would say uh, there's three surfers that I really, really had a really good connection. The first one was Marc Lacomar. Uh, Marc Lacomar was an up-and-coming kid from Osogo, and I was the old champ, sort of uh, retiring and doing going into going into coaching and he was the one where, where we met together. He was really willing to learn and I was willing to progress uh, in my coaching skills. And uh, I think we did an unreal job. And uh, for some uh, reasons, we had to stop that job a bit early, I think, when he was 16, because he went to Quicksilver and I was working uh, with Volcom, stuff like that, you know, like uh, in the end, it was sad that we didn't go further. I think we could have gone further. Uh, the second guy was William Aliotti. Well, William Aliotti is a, he's a guy from uh, Saint Martin. He, he, he was doing some uh, rollers so, and some windsurf, some motorbike when he was young. So, not scared of jumping. So, when he came to surfing, he was just taking speed and jumping, but really in advance for his time. You know, when he was 12, he was surfing like a. Trying to surf like Italo today, trying to get speed, and but he didn't have lines, didn't have a, the full bag of tricks, and we we really connected. And the way I, I see surfing, and uh, he really absorbed, and I thought that was a a very good success to to work together, a really good synergy. And the last one is my son, of course, because uh, we have that relationship, uh, father son, and uh, and we've done so much uh, road together. And especially as a coach, I could see from the beginning, you know, with all my mistakes before and all my learnings, I could coach him from his first wave. Oh, wow. And this is a very precious, you know, like uh, the right intentions about uh, all the knowledge that I picked uh, about uh, how to stand on the board, what to do at what moment. And, uh, you know, that relationship was unreal. And when you're when you push your son like that and you you see him grow, it's a, it's a very, very good uh, very good reward. And he's actually surfing really well today. I can say that uh, we did a good job together. <laughs> Very good. It's a priceless. <laughs> you know, it's a priceless when you when you push your uh, son, independently if you are like a, like a professional surfer or just a father, and you push so that, 
you know, you feel like uh, actually maybe maybe going back to the beginning of the interview, that is a wave that you don't want to to take. That is a wave <laughs> that you want to give, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it gives but, uh, more than what you get, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But uh, it's uh, man uh, when the my son told me at ten and a half, eleven. Oh, I want to stop. Uh, stop pushing me. It's like a. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I know. It's like a little, uh, little death, you know. Like because the relationship is so close. You're in the ocean together. You live so many things. You speak together in that special, special place, and uh, it's really something. But you see him grow as a man, and then you say, "Wow, yeah, he's a new surfer. He's a big surfer. He can go alone." So you're proud, also. <laughs> but uh, actually we should write a book on uh, you know I wrote a book on surfing huh? and I, I never put a chapter of father and son and I think that's the thing I would like to write for the, the, the there's a lot of things to know uh, father and son uh, surfing yeah, from the should. first wave to all the little details and uh, it's so important actually you should for me my son is only three years old so I just pushed him <laughs> for the first time so I still have some pushing around but uh, you know like in today's um, society where basically uh, father and son are separated because they don't find any, any point of common you know if you have surf in common with your uh, with your son it's something that will accompany you forever in, uh, yeah. in the life and so yeah. And I feel lucky because I, I coach him still. So I'm in contact. We still travel together. You know, I have a daughter. My daughter is 18, 19 now. And she she she, lost, she went away, right? She's living her life. And uh, I can still be witnessing with Sam's life because I'm following the same road in surfing. So that's a, a very good uh, common point. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for sharing these uh, three surfers. Very important meeting in your life. Uh, we started the interview about talking about you as a as a surfer and what is the most important thing in surfing in your opinion if we if i have to ask you the same question for coaching what would be your answer what is the most important thing in coaching for coaching yeah the wave <laughs> <laughs> yes of course it's, uh, you know it's about uh putting the wave in the, in the in the big picture right the wave is in the big picture and it's the one, it's going to give you all the, the answers. And then it's to adapt to the level of the surfer you, you have and put yourself in his level and project into the next level uh, when you analyze. And, uh, and a lot of coaches, it's about themselves. <laughs> but I think it's not about uh, the coach. It's about the wave. And it's about how to put the surfer today to learn how to adapt and as every coaching session is going to learn something because there's every day different waves. And then we, we define, uh, I try to make him meet the wave and develop the relationship and give, of course, really good, uh, useful technical tips to get uh, more uh, into the understanding of the, the wave. So I usually proceed by this. I, I, I full zoom, I wide angle like a photograph on the wave the understanding of the ocean today, where we are, what's happening. Then I go on what on the lines, the the wave. So it's not the ocean, the wave, and then the surfer. And the three, there's three level of analyze, there's three level of a uh, of inter interaction, and we try to work on that, okay. giving some intentions and trying to correct any any problem. That's going, uh, putting the surfer away from meeting the wave, you know? So there's always a, a bad uh, a body movement that uh, will not help him use the wave. So what I want in the end is him to really meet and use the wave to the maximum at the right place at the right time. But And then I, I give him the tips to have the right movements and, of course, the right intentions to be in the right line. Okay, okay. I understand. It's a... Uh... I, I picture why you were talking. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the Equipe de France uh, of mm -hmm. uh, surfing. So a lot of uh, young upcoming talents. Uh, who are the key, uh, let's say, young representative of uh, the future of surfing in France, in your opinion? Right now we have Kauli Vast, who is uh, from Tahiti. He's a very, very talented uh, 
uh, focused uh, surfer. He's been uh, living in a preserved environment, you know, uh, with his family. Of, uh, he's just surfing there and going to school with his the fathers, our uh, teachers. So the kid has a, a really good drive, a really good direction, and he has talent. And he has uh, the love of Chopo, and he's local there, so he can take a lot of... Uh, in Tahiti, he's got everything, the chopo, the waves. Uh, so he's got a very good maturity and confidence in him. In him, So I think he's one of the guys that we're going to count for sure in the, in the following years. And then uh, we have, uh, other than that, there's the generation of my son, you know, Sam. And then uh, Kilian Guerra, those guys. So they still have, uh, I think there's a lot of potential there too. Because uh, they, they have a lot of uh, information, they have a lot of uh, of opportunities given to them, with the sponsors where they live, and uh, and I think they can uh, present a, a good uh, progression. Yeah, it's um, quite difficult today, you know, like being a surfer on on uh, on tour to compete. The sponsors are not maybe like before, right? There is very... yeah, yeah, the industry really reduced everything, every help. So it's a problem. But in the end, uh, the WSL also changed. So it's only in Europe now, the, there's less traveling. Yeah. But still the surfers, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of surfers that need uh, more help, right? For for that goal to go all the way, you know, to the WCT. Uh, like I remember when it was Leonardo Fioraventi, Quicksilver was sending him to every event. He was surfing with uh, the best guys. And there was all that uh, learning process uh, that Quicksilver helped, you know. And uh, nowadays the brands have to they have to put money on the, the guys they believe in, you know. Like uh, let's say Quicksilver, it's it's Cicaoli, they should do the same with him, you know. Put the maximum on the guy they believe can do it. There are so many new surfers all around the world, right? And the brands they cannot afford to to cover them all, right? And by consequence, maybe some good talents are not, uh, uh, as you said, yes. not... Uh... Yes, because, uh, you know, and people function a lot by... Uh, there are some people, there are some late bloomers, you know? There are some people that uh, bloom late. Some others that are really good early and then uh, they fade out. So it's really tricky for, uh, for the team managers, but the team managers that serve I think about uh, a guy like Mickey, you know, Mickey Picon, he used to be a pro surfer. He really understands. So there's guys in brands that are very good value for the brands. And, uh, but it's been lost. Huh? Recently, the, the surf brands were super hardcore just with surfers. And maybe some guys were not at the right place, at the right job. But for the team managers, I think it's key to have, a, and for some key marketing roles or something like that, it's super important to have a, some people that really understand if you want to be a core surf brand, right? So it's a mix. It's a mix. I agree with you. So uh, you keep yourself very busy, right? Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things going on. Um, do you have any like future projects, something new that you really wanted to do? A part of the chapter dead and so on uh, that you you want to do. Um, is there something uh, else you're working it? Who are you working on, sir? I've been working. Uh, it was on stand. It's been on standby, but I've been working on on wave pools. You know, to to really develop a next level of coaching and surfing as well for the kids. And I think uh, I can't go anymore to Texas. I used to go there every year since the beginning. I think I was the first coach to go there. I think it's super important to develop a really clear uh, projects uh, as a coach. And uh, of course, I wanted to to develop. Uh, a new version of my book, including the chapter of uh, the father sons and uh, more progressive surfing as well, because surfing has evolved since uh, since I wrote it in 2010, definitely. Uh, and I've learned a lot, you know, more practical uh, thing. And actually, the project that naturally comes now is that there's a lot of of coaches that come to me, and I really want to go on that level as well to help the coaches develop some content. And I've been working with that Italian guy, uh, Danilo, uh, is here, but not only for his surfing, but for his coaching. We develop on the, a different uh, view of the coaching and give him a practical kit, uh, practical tips 
So I think it's a it's a road where I should go. It's a, a be a coach of coaches because there's a lot of coaches now, and uh, I think that would help. Uh, I would serve something because I think I, I need to serve a, a purpose. So that's something I could see myself uh, serving the surf the surfing. Yeah, <laughs> coaching the coaches. So it's uh, it's yeah, that's uh, not leaving the athletes at all, but. Uh, developing that side of the of the thing and i think it's really useful nowadays uh in general for us as a euro force for example you know because i won't coach a coach from brazil or anything but i'm open to it but i think uh there's a lot of good guys that have, that have good will in portugal there's a lot of coach in italy i think there are some but we need a we need to to go on a, on a good road right and i don't think i've i know the road but i think i can help uh, the people uh, the coach that want to learn benefits faster in their process because i've been uh, doing a lot of stuff and i've been experimenting mistakes and success and i can really give a uh, useful useful uh, feedback and useful uh, help to find their direction and to become uh, their best version yeah i i agree with you it's uh, it's something that uh... Uh, it might be as much rewarding as, uh, if not more, than uh, coaching surfers. So, mm -hmm. uh, at least coaches they tend to listen. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's really, there's it comes to the, the the way you are. There's really humble coaches that the, the fact that they come to me for asking uh, some uh, and they come with a full open mind to learn. I think that's the way, and I, I'm doing the same. You know, I try to learn from every. I'm not learning from a specific guy in general, but I learn all the time from uh, things I read, things uh, surf, surfers that I watch, surfers that I coach, coach that I coach. I, you can learn at all times, you know. So you, the, the mind, uh, the open mind, uh, state of mind is really important. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna finish our interview with a short Q and A session. So please answer the first thing that comes up to your mind, okay? Okay. The best surfboard that you ever ridden? It's an Almeric from Rob Machado that he sold me. Ah, wow. Almeric Rob Machado. Interesting. Okay, very nice. Favorite shaper? Uh, I would say Arakawa. He made me really good guns all along the year. Very, very, uh, you take the, the what if of your mind, you know? You know he's a shaper from there from a uh, from long time. He makes really good balls for pipeline and the chopo. So you could get the board and go, okay, it's a good ball. You don't think, oh, is it gonna be a good ball? Yeah, that's the, really important. The kind of Japanese quality mixed with the uh, yeah, and, uh, the 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 discipline to make the 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 last detail all the time on the board and uh, uh, the time taken. So I would say, yeah, I interviewed. Uh, Eric Arakawa for, for the podcast. If you want to listen, it was a great, great interview. Great guy, great, great man, great person. Uh, personal question, your favorite song? Wow. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite song, to tell you the truth, but I like uh, I like the reggae vibes, you know, like uh, the music like that. Uh, since I think it comes from my childhood in Senegal and all my friends listening to reggae and my, my brother, but... Uh, it's the music that goes with surfing, you know. Yeah, the sunset, yeah. uh, it's a good vibe. <laughs> I, I think I'm on to into reggae. You go. Yeah. I can definitely picture that. Your favorite surf spot? Now, it's I would say it's Lake Unu in front of uh, where I spent all my life coaching. And uh, it's Lake Unu because that's where I am. But uh, if you ask me in the world, I would say Chopo. Chopo. <laughs> Who is uh, your favorite surfer all time? Andy Irons. No doubt about it. It's connected with Eric Arakawa because uh, he, yeah. he was shipping for him, right? So, yeah. 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 But Andy Irons, uh, he really brought to surfing uh, free surf. He didn't uh, adapt to the criteria. He kind of surfed and it, the criteria changed and he was uh, doing uh, very unpredictable things. He was an unpredictable guy. He was doing airs. He, was, he had so much... Uh, so much technical uh, qualities and uh, the surfing was just incredible, the style. So for me, still, if you put in today, like in Mexico, the contest that was happening uh, in Mexico, yeah. I think it was more uh, more interesting than uh, some of the guys that uh, went in that competition and were doing the same thing, you know? So 
it's, it's, it's magic to a surfer to be unpredictable, spontaneous. And Andy Irons had that. And he was playing with the fundamentals, you know, yeah. playing. Yeah. You know, he was an artist. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. I agree with you completely. And the last question is a little bit unusual. We ask everybody on this show. We started talking about it briefly at the beginning. I want to know your best relationship advice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you cannot answer the name. <laughs> I, think, I think you have to... The best relationship advice is to listen and adapt. Yes. Like if you want to surf well, you have to listen to the wave and adapt to the wave. And, and I think you want to compose. <laughs> it's not about just you. It's about uh, a meeting point, you know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's about compromise with uh, different things. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. So thanks a lot to Dave for being on the show with me today. I look forward to talk to you very soon. Yes. <laughs> thank ciao. you so much. Va bene. Ciao. Va bene. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo!